Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone, it's OJ. Today we have the Battle Healer tech. It's an absolute beast. And here's why. The Battle Healer is a rare troop that has 1,584 hit points. This is practically as much as the Bowler and the Prince. What in the world is, does that mean? She does 123 damage per swing of her sword, which is most similar to the Baby Dragon, so she can one-shot each Spear Goblin. With the hit speed of 1.5 seconds, she dishes out 82 damage per second. Her hit and move speed is exactly the same as the Valkyrie. And she has a long hit range, similar to the Prince and the Night Witch. Now, here's where it gets crazy. Once she engages with her long range attack, she activates her ability and heals units around her. It heals both ground and air, but only when she's actively engaged in combat. With each swing, she gives off four pulses of healing worth 21 health for a total of 84 health per second. She also has a passive heal for herself. This ability activates after five seconds of not engaging in combat. She heals herself in two pulses for a total of 26 health. More specifically, this ability activates when the battle healer herself does not attack. She will still passively heal as she's being attacked when she's not swinging. Think of this mechanic as the royal ghost invisibility. If the royal ghost doesn't attack, he remains invisible. If the royal ghost gets attacked, he still remains invisible. If the royal ghost attacks, that's when he breaks his invisibility. Same thing with the battle healer. To reiterate, if the battle healer doesn't attack for 5 seconds, she replenishes 26 health per second. If she gets attacked, she will still replenish health. If she attacks, then she breaks her passive heal ability. Her active ability has a 4 tile radius. This is the exact same as the heal spell and spans 8 tiles in damage. It reaches a lot of units. If you're using her to defend against single melee units, you'll want her to engage at the very last second, close to your Prince's Tower. This way, the Prince's Tower will maximize damage before the healer finishes them off. This will also buy her time to passively heal before she even crosses the bridge. Similarly, if she's coming in alone, you'll want to let your tower do as much damage as possible before you defend her with your troops. This way, she will not actively heal and save your troops some health at the same time. The Battle Healer does very little damage. It's a little less than a baby dragon without the splash. It would just take forever for her to take out a large tank like the Golem. So you better have a tank killer in your deck, like a Prince or even like a Mini P.E.K.K.A. Her unique mechanic is her ability to make everyone else around her live longer. Now just think about a P.E.K.K.A. that's constantly healing or a healing balloon coming at you. She is designed to be a solid tank and more importantly, a healer. Whether you're healing all of your defending troops or going in on the attack, the more troops you have around her, the stronger her ability is. She's incredibly difficult to stop when she's in a death ball. Fireballies like Musketeer, Wizard, and Witch might not be worth fireballing if they get healed, but remember, she only has her active healing ability when she's attacking. It's not a good idea to fireball, lightning, or even rocket her with tower damage because she will survive and she will passively heal, potentially even up to full health. The only time you should use spells on the battle healer is if you get more value by clipping other units. Otherwise, you're now down six elixir and you have to defend a big push with a healer behind it. Good luck on that. Because she only targets ground units, her active healing abilities won't be activated, making air units the best way to defend against her coming in alone. Even bats can stop her completely for a positive, positive elixir, elixir trait. trait. Units that slow her attack will also slow her ability to heal. Think splashy units like Ice Wizard and Electro Dragon. One of her main weaknesses are swarmy cards. She straight up just gets overwhelmed and can't heal all of that damage. But be ready for spells like Zap, Fireball, and even the new reworked arrows. If you're using her, you should protect her from swarmies with splashies that target both ground and air, like the Executioner, Wizard, and the Baby Dragon. Remember, what makes her strong are the units around her that she can heal. If you have the opportunity to take them out first, she'll be very easy to deal with. The Elixir Golem is one of the best tanks that synergize with the Battle Healer. The constant heal makes it hard to completely stop all of those blobs. Those blobs are technically like swarmies. The big blob explodes, she's now tanking for the blobs. Just make sure to have some air counters alongside for that really big push. Any building can stop her from connecting to your tower if she's alone. But be prepared and predict for a big push if you even see her planted at all. Both Inferno Tower and Inferno Dragon can completely stop her, and more importantly, stop her from a distance, making her active heal non-existent. 
In order to use her to her full potential, you'll want to use units that can be healed. Minion hordes come to mind for this, or just the death ball of medium health cheap 3 elixir units like Knight and Zappies. There's no point in putting her in with bats or skeletons because those guys die, just die in one hit. You can't heal what's not there anymore. Remember, she's real weak and takes two shots to kill stab goblins, so using her to defend goblin bale should be your last resort. If you have two battle healers together, their heals do stack and make it that much harder to stop her. Think for 2v2 or mirror or even the clone spell. Heavy hitters like the P.E.K.K.A and the Prince take her out quite well, but it will be difficult to get to her if she's behind a big tank herself. One of the best counters to her and her supporting troops would have to be the Meganite. His spawn damage annihilates most units on impact. I know, I know, the Meganite, Sparky, Bomber, and Bomb Tower actually do do damage to her. My verse all video was recorded in the dev build which had her floating mechanic, but that's completely removed. It is not in the live build and that is my mistake. The Bowler is another great way of keeping her away. His knockback prevents her from actively healing others as long as you don't plant anything on top of her. Remember, she's not scary if she's not healing anyone, so try to take her out from a distance if possible. After defending a push from your opponent, she is amazing to turn into a counter push. She'll just passively heal up, then actively heal your opponents as you push. She is unique in how she can be the tank in front of all of your support, but also be part of the support healing your big tank. All spawners and swarmies can stop her alone. So far on TV Rail, she's in a lot of different types of decks. Pros seem to be testing her out on beatdown to graveyard and even balloon archetypes. One card I do see her paired up with is the Elixir Golem. Coincidence? Heck no! Healing blobs are no joke and they are definitely synergies that also follow the Elixir Golem. If the battle healer does become meta, carrying spell cards like arrows and fireballs will probably be more prevalent than zap and snowball just because she cannot actively heal units like goblins and minions fast enough. Air could also become more popular to offset the use of the battle healer. Hope this video helped. Let's get into some OP healer battle decks. Elixir Golem, Battle Healer. We have to use this deadly combo. She's gonna heal the Night Witch. The Sparky's is gonna back her up. We're just, we're just gonna do this. I have a good feeling about this. Electro Wizard and Baby Dragon are anti-air. She gets taken out by bats. You need to have anti-air when you play her. Ooh, never play Elixir Golem first. I'm just gonna rush the bridge like a fool. Oh wait, he's level 11. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> nice. All right. He's got an in Inferno Tower, okay. Well, I'm gonna go for a Night Witch in the very back. He's, he's not gonna go, know what hit him. She gets one hit, no big deal. Even though my tower got hit, I still have 400 more health than he does. How broken is that? I'm not even gonna use the battle healer yet. It's already over. Oh gosh, the Sparky already connected. There we go. Put the battle healer down in the center. She's gonna attack everything. The blobs are... No. no. Heal the blob, heal the blob, take the Sparky out. This is too easy! Well, because I'm level 13 and he was level 11. Was it the deck or was it me? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. <laughs> nice. Okay, one more time. Maybe we'll get someone else a bit better. I mean, a, a higher level. Okay, we're gonna get someone a little, a little bit lower level. I'm not doing this on purpose. I just, I just don't play ladder that much. I promise I'll climb soon. Okay, we're doing Sparky in the back. I, I'm, I have a good feeling about this healer. Level 12 Witch, though. Just let that Sparky chill out for a bit. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Uh, Took out the Witch. Oh, that's... That's not, not, the, not the best, but not the worst. Let's put the Battle Healer in the front. Kinda. The Sparky's gonna tank for it. Alright, we can, we can deal with that. Sparky's alive. Sparky, Sparky's alive still. That's all that matters. Stop hurting me, Spark. Sparky's alive. Sparky's not alive. Okay. I'm impressed. Those elixir blobs are gonna deal damage. I'm only at four elixir. I just gave him four elixir for the bottle. Battle blobs. Battle blobs. Elixir blobs. Same thing. Potato potatoes. One more hit. Nice. <laughs> that had nothing to do with skill. There's only the fact that I have a level 13 Sparky and a level 13 Battle Healer against a level 10. Not fair, Supercell. Well, it's also because I don't push. Ooh, we'll let that connect. I'm good. Let it all connect. Take out that Witch. Ah, uh, I'll forfeit the Sparky. Yeah, that's cool. I'm down. Like, 
it doesn't matter what I do. I could have stopped that giant skeleton, but I'm so maxed out right now, I can do anything. Alright, we're gonna do a witch. It's gonna be double elixir. We're gonna trick shot this. Oh my frick, he's got a sparky. So that's how we're gonna play it. Alright, I need my electro wizard for this. That night witch is gone. There's no way. Oof. Nope. We gotta get rid of that sparky. I feel like I gotta poison that witch now. Oh, yes. Double dip on that. Alright, now we'll stop this giant skelly. Maybe we'll take it a bit more cereal. Uh, nah. I'll do a sparky in the back. That battle healer is a write-off. She's just gonna die to that bomb before anything can happen. She's not gonna passively heal fast enough. It takes five seconds, there's no way that engaged fast enough. Maybe I will do poison. Right on the... Oh ho ho ho! Max no Sparky survives! He had to... He had to use the log for that. Oh, it feels bad. That had nothing to do with anything. It was just the fact that he was level 10. These matches. I love them. <laughs> I love, I love taking, taking candy, candy from a baby. baby. Oh my goodness, this hotel Wi-Fi. How am I not lagging? All right, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys know the tech video. There's so many strategies. There's so many things. We're in LA right now for the Clash World, World Finals. And thank goodness she's banned because this card is... It, oh, jeez, it would be like 2017 all over again with the Night Witch. That was a nightmare. Thank goodness they're banning the Battle Healer. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. December 7th for the Clash Royale World Finals. December 7th, right? Yes.